Good morning, YouTube. What's up? We're back at it again. Uh, doing another deck tech today. I had a small issue with all my other videos I had, and unfortunately, they got deleted. That's okay, though. They weren't the best of leagues, and they weren't the best of decks, so we're going to go ahead and just move forward with it. I got a new video editor, and hopefully I can get all that working out, and we'll be doing pretty good. So today, we're going to check out Mono Red Storm. Actually, one of my favorite low-key archetypes uh, it's not the best but it does win games uh pretty fast and uh catch some people off guard sometimes um the uh there is an infinite combo it, well infinite combo um essentially what it is is it's uh underworld breach an active steamkin or a steamkin with two counters on it and you cast burning inquiry uh, this allows us to draw three discard three and then those three allow us to use that and I exile him to cast Pretty Inquiry again, getting the mana from Runaway Steamkin. And with that, that allows us to just kind of keep filtering our hand until we hit like a, um, I don't even know, uh, it doesn't really matter. Until we can activate it twice, uh, get some rituals going, you know, pass in flames, and then we just go ahead and run it through until we kill them with a Grape Shot. So we, we're running three Grape Shots because we can uh, essentially just go off without having to full Storm combo. Uh, because we're running for Power Mancer's Ascension. Uh, and then the odd card in here would be Goblin Lore. Uh, it just works out really well for drawing cards in the mono red version. It's kind of like the best draw card. And uh, we kind of don't care about filling our graveyard up. Uh, and then the other odd card would be Increasing Vengeance. It just works out really well when we're able to poop out a lot of mana with like Runaway Steamkin. Like if we have a resolved steam can on two, on turn three, if we go ritual, ritual, or increasing vengeance, ritual, or, you know, we just have lots of options. And then the last oddity in here would be a pyromancer swath. It's kind of like a fun of. It is a two and a red. If an instant or sorcery you control deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals that much damage plus two to that permanent. Instead, uh, the downfall is at the end of our turn, we discard our hand. Uh, but it's just kind of when you're going off, you're able to cast this and then a grape shot, you know, for just, it just cheapens grape shot by a lot because it triggers on each one. So each trigger will do three damage instead of one. So just makes things pretty easy. It makes storm count of seven do lethal. So <laughs> pretty cool. Uh, other than that, it's just 17 lands. Um, typical removal also works well with um, power management ascension. And then Underworld Breach, for those who should know what this card does by this point, but this is what us, this allows us to cast all of our cards from the graveyard, giving them their escape cost. And um, looking at our sideboard, we have four Leyline of Sanctities, three Empty the Warrens, two, three Braid, two Guard Response, and then three Defense Grid. Um, it's kind of where I'm at. It could be changed up a bit. The deck's pretty straightforward. Uh, doesn't have a very good aggro map or doesn't have a very good um, sideboard plan yet or alternate win condition. Uh, I could play Aria Flame and that might come in instead uh, over the Pyromancer Swath just because it works as a don't always need a graveyard card. But uh, I made this a long time ago and I figured I should just do a video on it just to kind of get some more feedback on it, see what you guys think. Let me know. Uh, but yeah, so if you're interested in something like this, please uh, let me know down in the comments below. We, If you want to see this be played, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday. And then uh, don't forget to check out our sponsors, Mana Traders. Mana Traders is um, our sponsor up here. They are cool, awesome. They help out people for who haven't really uh, been able to get into Mako. It allows you to rent cards online. And using my code, you can get 20% off for your first three months. And the cheapest version is $9.99. So for 8 bucks, basically a month, you can rent up to 100 ticks, which I feel this deck falls under. I didn't check, but it's probably probably it's probably close. But 100, 100 ticks, and this is a deck you can just jam, you know? And if you like it, you can just kind of slowly buy into the pieces, and that way you can rent other things and go from there. But... Remember to like, subscribe, and follow this video. Let me know what your thoughts are down below, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.